Hi and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about linear independence and dependence. So in the way that I've been going through this content, we've actually already talked about independent and dependent systems. So this comes from our idea that we have consistent and inconsistent systems. And within consistent systems, we can either have an independent solution with one system or a dependent solution with infinite systems. So these words of independent and dependent actually come from these ideas of linear independence and dependence. So everything's kind of relating back to itself here, and we really could have done these in a different order. This is just the order I chose. So now we're going to talk about linear independence and dependence and see how it's related to the similar wording for the types of systems. So let's do some definitions first. We say that a set of vectors, so looking at vectors here, this set is linearly dependent if at least one of the vectors can be written as the linear combination of the others. So what this means is that a set is linearly dependent if one vector in the set is in the span of the others. So the span is the set of all linear combinations. And so if one of the vectors that we have in the set can be written as a linear combination of the others, then it would be in the span of those vectors, and this set would be linearly dependent. I like to think of this as meaning that one of the vectors is basically redundant. It could have been written as a linear combination of the other vectors, and so we didn't really need it to represent all the linear combinations. It was redundant. So linearly dependent is the word we define, and then in all other cases, we say that the set is linearly independent. I like to think of this as meaning that all of the vectors are needed. They're sort of independently important, and so we need all of the vectors to represent what we're doing. There isn't a single one that's just a linear combination of the others. So my main claim that I'm going to work to show you in this video is that linearly independent vectors correspond to an independent system when they're arranged as the columns of a matrix. This would mean that the corresponding system would have one solution. Similarly, I'm claiming that linearly dependent vectors will correspond to a dependent system where there are infinite solutions. Maybe you can see this claim and just sort of believe it, but I really want to unpack it and go through some of the ideas behind this. So this notion of linear dependence revolves around linear combinations, and it's related to span. So I want to go back to those ideas and talk about them briefly. So we have these equivalent questions that all mean the same thing. They're all asking the same question. We can just use different language to ask them. So we could ask, is the vector b in the span of the vectors v1 through vn? Asking this is equivalent to asking, are there weights c1 through cn such that we can write the vectors as a linear combination? So c1, v1, plus c2, v2, all the way to adding cn, vn to be equal to b. So this would mean that b is in the span of the vectors. And then finally, we could also ask, equivalently, is the system represented by the matrix v1 through vn as the columns augmented with the vector b? Is this matrix consistent? So to determine if a vector is in the span of another set of vectors, we want to find the weights that we can write it as a linear combination. And we do that by looking at the augmented matrix and then deciding if it's consistent or not. And we do that through row reduction. So taking this, now we want to think, how do we answer is the set of vectors v1 through vn a linearly independent or dependent set? So this set of vectors would be dependent if one of the vectors could be written as the linear combination of the others. So theoretically, we could check every vector in this set and see if it is a linear combination of the others. We just wrote out that we know how to do this. So we could ask, is a v1 in the span of the rest of the vectors, v2 through vn? And we could solve this by setting up the matrix and then row reducing to determine if it's consistent. Then we would have to ask for the next vector. So is v2 in the span of the other vectors, so v1 and v3, and then the rest of them. And we would continue going through each vector in the list. So is vn in the span of the vectors v1 through vn minus 1? 
but you can see that if there are a lot of vectors in the list and we're trying to determine if one is the linear combination of the others, we're going to have to check a lot of matrices and that's a lot of work. So we don't wanna to have to check every single vector to see if it's in the span of the others. This is not very efficient. We would like a faster and an easier way to do this. So to show you this easier way, I'm going to show you an example and I'm thinking of this as a proof sketch by example. So I'm trying to prove that claim I made earlier that linearly independent vectors will look like an independent system when we row reduce and dependent vectors will look like a dependent system when we row reduce. And so to convince you of that, we're gonna do this proof sketch by example. So let's look at a set of vectors V1 through V4, which are elements of R3. And let's suppose this set of vectors can be row reduced to the following. So we're taking each vector and making it a column in the matrix, and then we're going to row reduce it. Let's say it row reduces to the following, where we have 1, 0, negative 5, 0 in the first row, 0, 1, 7, 0 in the second row, and 0, 0, 0, 1 in the third row. So remember, we're trying to determine if these vectors are linearly independent or if they're dependent. Is it true that one of them can be written as the linear combination of the others? So in this row reduced matrix, I'm seeing that we have three pivots and one free variable. So that free variable is in the third column and a free variable. And my claim is that this actually tells us that V3 is a linear combination of V1 and V2. So that third column can be written as a linear combination of the first two columns. So, okay, stay with me. Let me show you why that works. So if we look at a new matrix now, so we started with all four vectors, but now let's just look at the first three vectors and we're going to augment it so that the third vector is in the B position. So it's on the right hand side of this augmented matrix. Then the row reduce matrix will look like the following. So from this, we're seeing that C1 would equal negative five, our first weight, and C2 would equal seven. This means that we can write the third vector as a linear combination of the first two with weights negative five and seven. So negative five of vector one plus seven of vector two would equal vector three. So if we look at that first matrix that had all of the vectors in it, that free variable column tells us that this is a dependent system. Then V3 being a linear combination of V1 and V2 tells us that the set of all four vectors is linearly dependent, since we just showed that one of the vectors can be written as the linear combination of the others. Basically, instead of needing to check every single vector to see if it's a linear combination of the others, we can just put them in this matrix and row reduce and see if there's any free variables. Those free variables tell us that it's a dependent system and that the vectors are linearly dependent. To write this out more formally, we can conclude that a set of vectors V1 through Vn is linearly dependent if the matrix with each vector as a column in that matrix row reduces to a matrix with free variables. So the free variables means there are fewer than n pivot positions. So there's some column that doesn't have a pivot. There are free variables. If this is the case, the set of vectors is linearly dependent. So we can say a similar statement about linearly independent. So this would mean that a set is linearly independent if the row reduce matrix made from the column vectors has no free variables. So it has exactly n pivots where there are n vectors. This means that the columns of a matrix are linearly independent if every column contains a pivot position. So if we put the vectors as the columns and we row reduce, if there's a pivot in each column, this means it's a linearly independent set of vectors. And this also means that the system itself is linearly independent. Those terms go together. Okay, so these are just the basic ideas about linearly dependent and linearly independent. I think seeing the examples in the next video will really help solidify these ideas. And this is all just to say that what you think linearly independent and dependent would mean in terms of independent and dependent systems, it all works out. 
and we'll see it with some examples in the next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.